my career to a little elevator boy in New York who was of Swedish descent. It was his parents who had gone to an art house to see a Swedish picture and came back and told him that they had seen a new actress. And uh, he was the elevator boy in David Selznick's, uh, he had a, he had an, uh, she was not an agent, she was his story and uh, uh, actors kind of, you know, the people that look for stories. And she lived in, in that building and he told her that my parents saw last night a picture called Intermezzo and you are always looking for stories and actors to deliver to Mr. Selznick. Why don't you go and see that movie? And she did. And you see, she sent the movie out to Mr. Selznick and that's how he decided to do a remake of Intermezzo in America. Do you feel that he um, had your interests at heart? Was he good with you as a, as a film Yes, actress? it was a wonderful man because first of all, he didn't have a big studio. He had few uh, actors and actors and he was terribly concerned about them. When you came to America, were you under any, um, were you at all worried that people were thinking of you as the new Garbo, as, as something, you know, coming out of Sweden as well, a new kind of thing, and that you yeah. were somehow under a shadow in that sense? Well, no, prepared. yes, uh, maybe a little bit, but to me Garbo was so big and so far out of reach that, I mean, I couldn't ever be compared with her because I admired her so much myself that I wouldn't ever dare to think of myself. I just came out to try, you know, my wings and see if I could fly. <laughs> but uh, strangely enough, when I came there, I saw her in my second picture, which was for Metro Goldwyn Mayer. She worked on her last picture. And I used to see her come out from the stars building and I came from the feature players and both being Swedish, we were very punctual. So we used to come down both at the same time from the different buildings and there was the car waiting for us to take us to the different locations where we were going to work. And I never did meet her, but uh, we stood there and kind of glanced at each other. And she finished her career so early, which is, I think, Everybody's a great surprise why she finished that. Did you her. never meet her then? I met her later, when she had given up her career. Uh, were you conscious of the fact that you were very different um, to American movies? I mean, the style of the, thir of the 30s and towards the late 30s, mm -hmm. until the war really, was a very artificial kind of enameled look with plucked eyebrows mm -hmm. and bow-shaped mm -hmm. lips. Did they try to do anything to you? They certainly did. And I came over, I was very strong. I don't know where I got that courage from, but it must have been in me. I was, I refused to change because the first thing that I was told was that I had to change my name because they couldn't pronounce it in America. And Bergman was too German. And as they were on the verge of, of war, they didn't want me to have a German name. And of course we have many Bergmans, which in Sweden, it's a very Swedish name. But I refused to change my name and uh, then they started exactly as you said. They wanted to change my hair, change the eyebrows, change my teeth. <laughs> and I said, I leave. <laughs>